Hey guys. Okay, I've got a neat little video for you today. But first off, I wanted to give you a little bit of information. I know that lots of you that watch my videos like um, diamond painting, different crafts, you've enjoyed the um, little uh, Christmas tree decorations and things like that. Now if you do like diamond painting, I am I have started another channel, it's called Angel Ruby Arts and the channel is more designed towards um, diamond painting, drawing, things like that. I've only just started it so it's only tiny but if you would like to see more about diamond painting and things like that, hop on over to there and uh, there's more content there for you. But I did want to say, um, I say because I know lots of you diamond paint here, then I found a little supplier in the UK, um, it's a little family run business and they were, they are lovely, they've been really helpful, I had a few questions, they messaged me back instantly, um, I went through the Facebook website and um, they, they on Messenger, they were brilliant, they answered all the questions that I had. Um, straight away they were really really helpful um, they were I say they were a small family run business now the um, name of them is Smith's Beads I'll just hide my information but it's Smith's Beads they are I say they were lovely I had no problems at all the prices I found are really competitive the prices are, are, are very good a lot of times I find with diamond painting, some of the accessories and things are really overpriced. Their prices were good. I found them, you know, their site was easy to use. It's not a massive site, but, you know, they've got, they've also got um, bits and pieces for um, jewellery making. So that's good. And they've got some nice kits for kids as well. I was searching on the internet to find a, um, a varnish that I could use on um, the top of some of my resin pieces. I came across a varnish and actually um, ended up purchasing it and using it for my diamond paintings and which the effect was beautiful. It came out really, really well. Um, so I got to thinking, well, it is an acrylic varnish, it's this stuff, uh, and I thought, I wonder if I can use that on my resin pieces. When I'm doing UV resin, I ha the spray, the high gloss varnish spray that I've got that works fantastic for epoxy resin, actually uh, it must be some chemical reaction or something because when I tried it on my UV pieces, it um, goes cloudy, it puts like a really weird mist film over the top and it's ruined the pieces I've tried. So then, um, as you well know, I've used nail varnish, um, UV top coat and sometimes um, I'm just not 100% like if um, the piece is small it's fine but if the piece is larger you know you can get those brush strokes and things like that um, with nail varnish on a larger piece and then if you use a UV top coat it's not practical on a, on a bigger piece um, one because the bottles are quite small and you would use a lot um, and, and it can be a bit tricky so I did think before about using a liquid varnish and um, I thought well I don't know whether they're really designed for that purpose but so this one um, when I saw somebody using it for diamond painting I tried it out I loved the results and I thought I wonder if I could put that on my smaller resin pieces so I had a little go and 
that I've still got a few more questions, but it actually did work. Now it's actually shinier on this side than it is on this side. So I was really pleased with that, but I did find on one of the pieces it started to peel a little bit. Not on this one, um, on the other test piece I did, it peeled. And I think that's because it was shiny onto shiny. So I think it probably needs a little bit of a tooth to stick to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test some pieces with you now and we'll have a look to see if we like the effect. This is just um, a UV piece I did, a mirror. I haven't took the film off yet, but I was just testing out some stones and things like that. And on the back, it's... Um, now, I did... This is glitter. But I did coat the back, um, but I didn't want to coat it again because I'd end up with that sticky residue on the top and um, I, I don't and it's too big to do with nail varnish and I haven't got enough of my UV top coat left to do the whole of the top of this so I thought I'm going to try it on that then I've got some of these which um, I made to turn into hair clips so they're sort of bumpy on one side with the glitter that side's lovely and then this side with the, where the sort of the glitter it's been on the back um, they're quite bumpy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a piece with a piece with um, just glitter which is a bit smooth because this has got quite a bit of rough to it and then what I'm going to do on the other one I'm going to do a UV coat that I know will leave it tacky then I'm going to put the varnish on top of that because then that tells me because these were epoxy resin I want to be able to use it on top of UV. If it gives me a cloudy film, then I'll know I've got another reaction and I can't use it. Um, but also, that sticky layer that we try to get rid of um, will actually help, I think, the varnish to stick. So, I'll give it a bit of a shake. Decant some into my little. I'm actually going to, this is just a Pringles lid, which is, they're dead useful actually. Pour some in there. Now I've got a brush to try and apply with a brush and I've also got my little um, silicone tool to see if we can um, apply better with that. So we'll give it a go with the brush first on this bigger piece. And I'm just going to put some underneath here so that it can pull. There we go, much better. Right, let's have a look. Now, as I'm expecting this to stick better because it's got the glitter. What I'm looking for to see if I get loads of brush strokes. Um, because if you were doing resin, if you're applying a top coat of resin, as you know, you would pull the resin and sort of drag it over with a toothpick and wait, make sure there was enough on the back to cover, to stop any dips or anything like that. So I'm going to probably apply the same technique. So I will brush it over, but then I will let it level and then I will sort of put enough on the back to give us that nice nice sort of bubble coat without any dips or anything like that. Now this will take a few hours to dry but that's cool, that's fine. I'm not bothered about waiting. If it gives me a nice finish that doesn't bother me at all. And I think um, I could use this on many other projects to be honest. It's quite thin so I'm not sure how whether you need a couple of coats if it would end up sort of streaky or anything like that. When you sort of, I suppose it depends on um, the surface you're covering. Like if you're covering like paper mache or anything like that, then you'd be fine. But if it's a really slippery surface, I'm not sure how much it would stick to that. So I'm just pull, putting it on until can't see any dips. So we've got a nice thick coat and hopefully, well, I could pour it on at this rate while I'm doing this, but hopefully 
it will give me that same effect. The theory is, it'll give me that same effect you get when you dome, and that's uh, that's it's probably the best word actually I was thinking of earlier. I'm hoping to dome the back to give that same resin look when you dome the piece and you get those kind of I don't know why I want to keep saying bubble edges but you know when it sort of domes over the side to the edge and it kind of looks really sweet and neat I'm very good with English today can't think there we go now that looks pretty much domed effect. If that dries like that, without a, a film, with it all nice and clear and glossy, I'll be absolutely well impressed. And this will be my new best friend. Okay. There's only one problem. I've got to get this down without it spilling. Yay! Okay, right. It might not be perfectly level. I'm going to keep an eye on that and see if we if it looks like it's uh, dipping in any places, running to one side or anything. I think it is slightly running to one side, but it's yeah. I think that side is slightly. I mean, it is my fault for doing it on a piece with like stones on the other side, but it's not probably the best thing to do. Give me one sec. Right, I'm going to one sec. Okay, so I've laid that down and I've propped up a wet wipe actually on the other side to uh, because it was pulling to the one side, so that's fine. Now, these two, one I'm going to cover in UV, one I'm going to just do as it is. So we'll do this one as is. And again, I'm going to leave this one laying down there because oh yeah, nearly made a mess with that one. So it seems okay to apply with the brush. It's it is quite thin, but pulling it on resin um, to give that doming effect. I think you could use, I've got uh, this little tool here, but I think that would be so little. This brush is actually picking up quite a good amount of, of the varnish for me to do. But uh, I think it would take me so long with that other one. So the reason I'm doing this with a shiny background is to see if it peels off. Now I said I did do a tester and it did peel when really pulled. But then, you know, you're sort of not going to pull around at your pieces. But if you're wearing like hair clips and stuff, then yeah, we don't want it wearing off or rubbing off or anything like that. So that's that one domed. And then this one. I'm going to use the resin that I know gives me a little bit of a sticky layer, which is this one. And then I'm literally going to do the same effect, down it. I just need to get a cocktail stick to get that ready. There we go. And then dome this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to deliberately leave it because if you under cure I'll cure it enough that will give it that will cure but I'm going to leave it so that I know it's sticky and that way where are they 
I know it will give me good adhesion. And I'm thinking, this is only just me thinking, it might make no difference at all, but I'm thinking, if I've got that sticky layer, the adhesion should be slightly better. And as usual, I should have got my... I haven't got all my tools at the moment because Christmas and everything, I um, have to work on um, in the dining room. I don't have a separate workspace. So I've put everything away to enable us to have a clutter-free dining room for Christmas and I haven't got all my stuff out. So I'm sorry, this is um, a little bit ad hoc. But that's okay, we can adapt. Are we nice and clear? Okay. I'm just going to scooch this one out the way. Come on. And then put this one. And I'll do that. And then I'll bring you back. Okay, so that's domed lovely, but I do have that sticky layer. So, these were epoxy. Now we're going to see if this straight onto UV resin gives me that dreaded film I get from the other one. whether it gives me better adhesion because it's on. Now, as I said, the other one, this star next to me, keeps pulling to one side. I've tried to level it up. So you do need to have a nice level surface, same as you do on resin really. But because UV resin, you cure it quite quickly. Um, it's not as, as apparent, sort of, you know, when you're doing an epoxy resin. And over time you think oh that's level and then you go back to it and you're like no that's slanted um, this is going to be like that so just make sure and normally I wouldn't have I wouldn't normally be doing a piece that's got loads of well I suppose you might be but I don't normally have pieces that are very uneven on the other side um, just with that one it, it is now as it goes on you can see it's milky it's a little bit like PVA, Once it, it, it's milky when it goes on and then it dries clear. Um, well that's what happened when I did my diamond painting anyway. So I'm just trying to ascertain if we can use this, because if we can use this for resin I will be very, very impressed. Because it means I can dome, once I'm doing my UV pieces, I can dome them with this. It could it would be easier if it was slightly thicker, um, but that's okay. We can, being very careful, we can get right in there. Right, does that look like it's all totally... I can't see with it. I'm putting my head in the way. Okay, right. Let's see how these dry. When I have some sort of conclusion, I'll bring you back and we'll have a look. Okay. So they're all dry now. Um, what do we think? Um, is it the answer to all our problems? Not sure. This one's dried beautifully, um, but you could definitely do with a second coat on that. But there's no issues at all, no bubbles, no nothing. But I think definitely a second coat on that one. This one, which I did before as one of the testers, um, has dried lovely, and that definitely I would be happy with that. Um, as it's the back of a piece, it's still a little bit, you can see, feel the glitter, still a little bit in there. The one that I did with the UV resin has come out beautiful, the shine is beautiful, there's no um, hazy, misty. Uh, residue left nothing so it's lovely there is a few little undulations in it so it hasn't dried beautifully crystal flat um, and clear so 
it's clear as in but you can still see little ripples in it so whether it be the perfect top coat I think I'd have to practice it with a little bit more the again this the, that coat that went over the the single coat that went over the, the glitter is nice um, it doesn't want to peel off it doesn't want to chip away so I think it's definitely a possibility it's definitely um, it's definitely something that I will keep persevering with it's uh, whether it's a quick fix to go over the sticky residue of the UV I'm not a hundred percent but it's definitely a candidate for practice a little bit more with it um, and find it sort of you know ways of working with it um, and find it's it, the best ways to work with it then yes it could definitely be a possibility uh, so yeah I hope you found this useful there may be other varnishes uh, similar that will work better I'll keep my eye open um, so I'm still looking for that perfect coat top coat that will I'll be able to pop over the top of UV resin to get rid of that sticky residue that, to give us that glass like appearance that that uh, you know that I'm looking for thank you ever so much for watching if you did like my video please like and subscribe um, I've got an uh, a little video coming up soon that I hope you'll be interested in which is an exciting one so look out for that and uh, take care and I hope to see you soon bye bye